Hello everyone. When students first join the engineering colleges, especially the NITs and IITs, they come with the expectation that if their school teachers and especially their coaching institute teachers were so good, then how good must the professors of these NITs and IITs must be? But just after doing one or two weeks of classes, they soon begin to realize that that expectation is not really met because sometimes the quality of teaching is not very good. And I can relate to this feeling from my own personal experience having been a student uh, in the IIT system. So from my personal experience, I've had the privilege of attending lectures of teachers who were simply superb. It was so good sometimes that I felt that why did the period have to end? I just wanted to wanted the lecture to continue. But on the other end of the spectrum, what happened was that sometimes it was just physically painful for me to sit in the class. And in between, in between these two extreme ends of the spectrum, there's always a mixture of the good and the bad. And in this video, I want to explore a little bit on some of the negative aspects of it, some of the bad qualities that are there. Uh, so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, divide the discussion into three broad sections. First, I'm going to explore why does it happen that the quality of teaching is bad sometimes, of course, but why is it bad sometimes? Next, I want to discuss some of the criteria based on which we can say that a teacher is good or bad. And finally, I would like to discuss a little bit on what students can do if they genuinely find that the teaching is not going well. So let us begin this discussion first by exploring why the teaching quality is sometimes bad. Now I'm going to uh, place this discussion in the context of the NITs and the IITs, but whatever I'm going to discuss is absolutely true for some institutes abroad also. In fact, for most institutes abroad, but let us just confine ourselves to our country, India. So the primary reason Okay, it's actually very simple for, uh, for sometimes the bad quality of teaching that you see. The profs, we, are not trained to be teachers. This is the simple and bare truth. So the, the way that we become profs is by showing ourselves uh, to be good at research in our, uh, during our PhD, during our postdoc, and that's how we get selected. Uh, in fact, quite a long while ago, there was absolutely no system at the entry level, at the selection level of professors to, uh, to gauge anything regarding their teaching. Now it is, of course, uh, in the last uh, 10 years or so, uh, the things have changed a little bit. And at least I know for a fact that in uh, most of the IITs, there is something called a teaching seminar in addition to the research, research seminar. But there's always the emphasis more on the research side. So nobody can become a professor at the IITs or the NITs without being a good researcher. But there is nothing really to prove with regards to the teaching. And there is certainly no training for us to become good teachers. Certainly not before. And even after joining, there is nothing like that. So it's always like you join an, an institute as a new faculty member and then you are allotted some course and then you would expect to just appear in the in front of a class of students and start teaching. And the, the expectation is that just because you happen to be good at research, just because you happen to be a good student in your own student life, uh, somehow magically you'll also be a good teacher. That of course doesn't happen. The other reason is that the personal career progress of the faculty members of us is not actually dependent on teaching uh, to a great extent. Sure, we are answerable if we do not teach well at all, but the bar is not very high as compared to the expectations that are there for us in terms of our research output. So it doesn't really hurt us in a very selfish way speaking uh, if we don't teach that well. But if you don't do research properly, then it actually hurts us. So I think that is one of the reasons, a major reason why many people, they do not give that much attention to teaching because it really doesn't help their career. And this is absolutely true and very unfortunately so, not just in India, but also abroad. And, and, and the unfortunate thing is that uh, there is no uh, 
no efficient way to distinguish between a, a professor who is putting a lot of effort into his teaching as compared to another professor who is just uh, like uh, checking the bare minimum check boxes which are required to maintain a decent level. Uh, and I have seen this from my own thing that here at IIT Kharagpur we have the feedback system from the students uh, and we have it out of a score of 5. I have seen that while it is uh, not so uh, difficult to maintain something just above 4, but to go from 4 to 4.5 is really very difficult. Okay, and if you have to score above 4.5 and it becomes really, really difficult. You have to really pay attention to your teaching. You have to be really, really very proactive in helping the students and taking care for your teaching. That takes a lot of time. Okay, and I have seen this from absolutely first hand experience. It takes a lot of lot of effort. Uh, let us next uh, look at some of the criteria based on which we can say somebody is really good or bad. Okay, because uh, while feedback from the students is certainly an important thing but there are certain uh, golden standards which I feel uh, which based on which we can see somebody is uh, good or bad. So first of all uh, regarding uh, the ability of a professor to organize and structure his course. So wh what are the things that are expected? Uh, so if I were a student I would expect the, uh, the teacher to organize his course in such a fashion to structure his course in such a fashion that all the important points of the course of that semester wide course are very uh, cleanly very neatly laid out uh, uh, at the beginning of the semester so when the tests are going to be held when the assignments are due what is the actual syllabus how much of it will be covered when what is the actual lesson plan week by week uh, on a week by week basis uh, then what are the tutorial sheets all of these things are very well laid out Okay, so this is the bare minimum I would expect as a serious, academically serious student from my professor. And you'd be surprised actually that this is like the basic level. So even this basic level is not maintained by certain professors. It is not that they don't care about the students, but somehow in the rush of the semester, uh, these things just don't happen. Okay, if you ask them, whether they think these are important or not, they will definitely say it is yes, but when it comes to the running of their own courses, sometimes they don't do it. Okay, uh, And mind you, I, I try to do it to, uh, to do these things to the best of my ability, but I have seen from my own personal experience, these are not that easy to do. These are very basic requirements, but to structure it properly and to have a proper plan in place at the beginning of the semester, you have to put in some proactive effort and invest the time for it. And believe it or not, which is why I was not able to make uh, uh, the YouTube videos for the past couple of months, uh, because there's always the mad rush of these things. Anyway, the next thing, okay, is regarding the very important ability to actually teach and communicate effectively, to explain the concepts. So no matter how much you may organize and uh, no matter how much a professor may organize and structure his course very nicely, but at the end of the day, if he is not able to stand in front of a class of students and explain the concepts very nicely to actually teach very well, then he cannot be said to be a good teacher. There is simply, okay, I have to put this bluntly, there is simply no substitute for actually standing there in front of the class and teaching in a genuinely good way. Now, uh, it, is, it is of utmost necessity for such a thing to happen that the, that the professor has the requisite knowledge so he should know the the lessons inside out that is a given but in addition to that at this high level it is also necessary that the professor should be able to connect to probably certain other courses for example when i'm teaching mechanics of solids uh, i try to connect some at some times to fluid mechanics uh, maybe to certain maths courses also so these are again certain basic things which is not very hard to do but uh, I think these are important. Uh, furthermore, in certain engineering courses at least, it is important that the professor makes an effort to connect the lessons to some of the professional practices. Okay, because ultimately the expectation is that the students will go out and uh, be professional engineers. So why not start doing this from the class itself. Now on these counts, I feel that most of the IIT professors are more than knowledgeable enough uh, 
they have the requisite knowledge for doing all of these things but somehow uh, I feel that they are not communicating their knowledge in an effective way there are many people who are senior to me probably they can suggest better but uh, before going to class I myself spend quite a lot of time so every before every one hour class I find myself preparing for at least one hour or maybe even more than that uh, uh, despite uh, the fact that I have been teaching this uh, courses for quite a few years now I have to put in that much effort so I, I, I really do think that a little bit of homework is absolutely necessary on the part of the professor also before going to class on the note of effective communication uh, I feel that uh, and I know uh, that many students feel that when the uh, professors uh, teach from slides it is not really very effective especially in courses which are derivation based which are uh, uh, which involve a lot of maths uh, even in the engineering courses so if the professors are relying on the slides then what happens the pacing is somewhat uh, uh, too speedy that the professor just uh, runs through the uh, the syllabus without having ensured that the student has actually picked up on the concepts uh, but if we do this on uh, on the on the blackboard on the chalkboard uh, the the place all automatically gets slowed down a little bit and we can uh, actually gauge what students uh, are actually picking up or not even then it is difficult i know from first hand experience but probably for derivation based courses slides are not the best way to go uh, and this is something which i know students have quite a strong opinion about also of course i know at the same time that for certain courses uh, for example in manufacturing uh, within mechanical engineering there are certain courses which involve lots of complicated diagrams and it is not very realistic to expect that the professors will draw those diagrams there are some legendary professors who can manage to do it uh, but uh, it is not always very realistic within the limited time that we have in the semester to complete the syllabus in that fashion so in those types of courses yes the slides may be uh, necessary on a completely uh, different uh, but related note what I would like to say is that regarding this explaining teaching and communication uh, no matter how much one can prepare I had said that uh, people need to professors need to do a little bit of homework before going to class but no matter how much of preparation they have done ultimately when they are standing in front of a group of students and teaching there will inevitably be certain times when the students will ask something which are completely off tangent and uh, the the professor necessarily has to uh, think on his feet and utilize that those moments those unique moments as uh, very good uh, teaching opportunities so that is I think how an organic connection can be made between the professor and the student but this is something which is not so easily done it is I mean this kind of an ability to think on one's feet uh, in front of uh, of a big class uh, and uh, and really turn these moments into teaching opportunities it it is kind of a gift some professors can do it very very well i have i have had the privilege of attending those kinds of classes also uh, and i feel that uh, people who are genuinely active in research they have a greater ability to do these kinds of things okay so uh, there is always this uh, debate of research versus teaching but uh, in certain aspects i think the research can actually inform the teaching also and i'm sure many students will agree with me on this point uh, and this is how probably uh, we can distinguish uh, the quality of teaching at a great place from a not so great place uh, i'll leave it at that uh, going to the next point uh, which is that Another criteria for a good teacher is that uh, is his ability to actually inspire his students. What I mean by that is, uh, so this is at a slightly higher abstract level, is that beyond the actual nuts and bolts of the teaching, beyond the organization and everything, uh, a good teacher, a great teacher actually, will be able to inspire his students to f kind of fall in love with the subject to take up projects in the subject and maybe even go for higher studies or take up a truly truly genuinely professional practice in that area so those kinds of teachers are rare 
but it is but they are there they are very much there but on the flip side i would say that sometimes there are certain teachers who are very good at uh, saying goody goody things in class and saying high five things but they do not fulfill those basic uh, things like organizing the course properly structuring their courses giving the problem sheets and just saying goody goody things so that doesn't work also okay so you can go to that higher abstract level of inspiring the students for going into higher and better things but only have first uh, done the basic level things properly this is my my two cents worth of opinion okay uh, so after all of this discussion what i would what i would like to uh, discuss in very short is that uh, if the students find that the teaching is not going very well what can they do okay because this inevitably happens with everyone i face this too as i've already said uh, what to do in that case well when we were students we were so very shy and kind of i mean too respectful to the teacher that we that we did not do anything that's the sad truth okay uh, we never gave any feedback to the teacher nor to anybody else like what was happening in the class in those courses that should not happen okay so my suggestion is that uh, students if they find that the teaching is not going very well they should give some feedback to the teacher in a very polite fashion in a very respectful fashion and you would be very surprised as students to find that uh, actually some teachers they would be grateful if they kind if they get uh, this kind of feedback so uh, for example here at iit kharagpur we have the system of feedback from the students but that only happens at the end of the semester so uh, of course when the students give some feedback uh, and even if the professor is receptive to constructive criticism he can mend his ways but he can only do so for the next batch of students so for that batch of students the, the already the damage has been done so while something is going wrong i think it is a good idea for the students if they detect that something really is going on if they are not understanding in class maybe just take it up with the uh, teachers in a very respectful fashion and give some feedback that why they are not understanding in class maybe something which the teacher can slightly tweak in his approach of teaching in his way of communicating with the students or interacting with the students during the class uh, that can make a, a world of change okay that can bring about a world of change this is not something uh, drastic that i'm suggesting but uh, i have seen in my experience that uh, students sometimes just crib in front of other professors that okay this is not going good i cannot understand but what good is it if you complain to some other uh, faculty members or maybe your faculty advisor uh, it is just better if you directly take it up with the teacher with whom uh, you are facing the difficulty so on these points uh, i'll close this video i'm sure there will be many many other points which students will feel very strongly about uh i would be very very happy to see uh those kinds of points discussed in the comments section uh and uh let's hope that um, this video is a small step forward in bringing about a better teaching culture so thank you very much all the best